Between all the licks and scales and arpeggios that you'll find in jazz, there are a lot of ways to move through chord changes. You've probably heard about different ways that you can use the melodic minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, pentatonic scales, bebop scales, triad pairs, all sorts of interesting melodic structures to play interesting lines on jazz tunes. But the reality is this. If you can't use the major scale and basic seventh chord arpeggios to sound good on chord changes, then all that other stuff is not going to help you sound better. In fact, until you're ready, those sounds can make it really difficult to focus on what really matters. And in terms of really playing the changes, there's only one thing that matters, and that's playing chord tones on downbeats. And chord tones aren't anything special, they're just the notes in the chord that you're playing over. Here's an example on a 2-5-1 in the key of C major. Each of these chords is within the key of C major, so the common wisdom is that you can use the C major scale to improvise over this entire progression. And that's true, but here's what happens if you use that scale on that progression indiscriminately, without any sort of particular intention. But if I hit a chord tone on beat one of each measure, all of a sudden it sounds like I'm really playing the changes. Obviously that's not all you're ever gonna want to do. And if you listen to players like Charlie Parker or Wes Montgomery, or really anyone else worth listening to, you'll notice that that's not all they do either. But if you can't do that, if you can't just play chord tones on downbeats, then you're leaving it up to chance that what you're playing is gonna be related to the changes in any way. And if I did wanna play something a little more melodically adventurous, then continuing to emphasize chord tones is what's going to tether that line to the chord changes. So here's a couple licks showcasing a range of melodic techniques, but that also emphasize chord tones on downbeats. <laughs> So how do you go about practicing this? Well, to start, hopefully you can quickly name the notes in any seventh chord. For instance, if I asked you to name the notes in a G seventh chord, could you quickly come up with G, B, D, F? Be really honest with yourself about this, because if you can't do that, then you can't expect yourself to be able to keep up with chords that change every couple measures or every measure. But don't worry if you can't do that yet, because putting this information on the guitar is a really great way to learn about the structure of these chords while learning some really essential arpeggio and scale shapes all over the neck. But for now, let's focus on just a couple shapes in one position. So if we want to play over that 2-5-1 in C, then we're going to need arpeggios for D minor 7, G7, and C major 7. And as you go through shapes like these, it can be really helpful to just name the notes as you play them. <laughs> In order to start working on this 2-5-1, let's just play any chord tone on the downbeat of each chord. Now let's try two chord tones per measure. Now let's try four. You can even do eight chord tones per measure. Again, these aren't really the lines that we're looking to be able to play in the long run, but if you can do this, then you're gonna be able to navigate the entire neck of the guitar really easily with really any chord changes. And there are a lot of different combinations that you can use, so at first it can be really helpful to plan everything out in advance and then play what you've written. And then once you get more comfortable, you can start to use these examples on the fly. Now, what about scales? As I showed you earlier, playing the major scale over 2 out 1 is a perfectly valid way to play over the chord progression, but we're going to have to do so strategically. 
We're gonna to have to emphasize chord tones as we move through the scale. And my advice to you is this, try to visualize the arpeggio shapes within the scale pattern. For instance, here are all the notes within C major in this position, and here's how you can visualize the arpeggio for each chord. If you do this, as you move through the scale, you'll see different landmarks that are good ways to emphasize the chord tones of each chord as you move through them. To practice this, let's choose a chord tone for each of the chords in our 2-5-1, and then we're gonna to try to connect those chord tones with the major scale. We don't need to just move up and down the scale. We can skip notes if we want, but let's try to keep it as linear as possible. And for this first example, we're gonna connect F, the third of the D minor chord, and B, the third of the G seventh chord, and E, the third of the C major seventh chord. Here's another example using the fifth of the D minor seven, the seventh of the G seven, and the seventh of the C major seven. You can endlessly come up with examples for this, and just like the arpeggios, the more you do it, the more naturally you'll see the pathways between each chord. And once you get comfortable with both the arpeggios and the scales, you can start to combine them to create even more interesting lines. I hope you take this approach seriously. One of the most common issues I see with less experienced jazz musicians is that their solos can seem to wander through the chord changes without any real sense of direction. And it can be all the more frustrating for someone when they know all the right scales and arpeggios, and they know all the right chords to use them over, but for some reason, it just doesn't sound right. It just doesn't sound like jazz. And it's not that hard to intellectually understand that if you play chord tones on the downbeats, then it's gonna outline the chord changes and it's gonna give us that sound that we're all familiar with. But this is way bigger than just understanding something. What we want is to build the habit of emphasizing chord tones. We want our habit to be playing the sounds of each chord as they happen. So when you learn new scales or patterns, see what you can do to make them outline the chord changes. See what you can do to make them actually sound like the chords that you're playing over. And when you learn new licks, see what it is about those licks that is outlining those chord changes. Sometimes it sticks very closely to the chord and plays just the arpeggio, and sometimes there's a lot of altered notes. But there's always something that tethers that lick to the chord changes. Sometimes it goes far away from the sound of the chord, but it always comes back eventually. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, and if you're looking for arpeggio shapes and scale patterns all over the neck, then you can find those on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Guitar. That's where I post all kinds of bonus content, like extra licks and extra videos and lessons, all kinds of stuff that you can't find here on YouTube. Of course, there are a lot of other places that you can find arpeggio patterns and scale shapes, but if you go to Patreon, you'll see what shapes I think are best to use all over the neck for any major scale or any seventh chord arpeggio. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And let me know in a comment below something else that you'd like to hear about in a video like this. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.